we're going to go to Advanced Post-Production. In the Modules area is where you'll find your assignments each week. I will activate this before class. We can start with Commercial Going Home Assignment. In the Assignment area, you can find the Download Media. So you're going to download this media. You will select and download. However, it shows up in the student view for this. Download. And you can tell it where you want it to download to. I'm going to put it into my um, into my Avid Media folder. Well, that's downloading. I'll go to the other assignment. I can leave that page while well, it's downloading. It's still downloading. And go to Going Home Assignment and download the media for Going Home. This is already put into two folders, so I will download it and tell it to also go into my Avid Media folder. So now I'll have two zip files in my Avid Media folder, which I'll want to unpack before trying to import these into Avid and move the zip file to the trash after unpacking it. Let's unpack. Let's start by unpacking commercial. We're going to double click the zip file. In commercial, we're going to sort, create two folders, audio and QuickTime files. Now that I'm in the commercial, I'll go in here right-click make new folder and right-click make new folder okay we'll call one folder audio and we'll put the audio files in there you can see these are white and the remaining files are movie files. We'll put those in the other untitled folder and label that movies. Let's label this one movies. And then we'll hold the shift key to select all and move it in there. Click that one, hold the shift key and move it into movies. So now in commercial we have audio and movies. We're going to move this zip file to the trash. And then we're going to move this zip file to the trash. Avid will not input the... So we have footage QuickTime. Let's make a standard. It's going to be called footage QuickTime. Let's call this one footage Quick quick time. Okay, so we have commercial and going home with these two types of audio. That will enable us to create bins based on folders in the inputting process. Find the software. Here it is. Okay, so I'm going to make a new project that the um, commercial project, which is the first one we're going to make, we're going to navigate and put this project in Avid Projects. We will open that we're going to rename when we get to format 720p is an h is a high definition um, notice it's hd it's 720p is high definition but there's several types and what we're going to do is go to the tr960 which it means it's been it has an ana, anamorphic squeeze we could save a custom preset but we don't need to okay so then we'll just zoom back we've set that we've created the project we've told it where to go let's do the search data and we're going to put it in our search data folder this way you can use your hard drive plugged into any computer and you're not going to have anything offline okay so basically i have that set up and i will create now what I want to do is to click the edit pane so that we're in the edit window. This is your bin container here. And you have two sides. One is where the bins are. The other is the other. This is the bin container on the left where you have your bins. And I'm going to right click in this bin and say input from the source browser. So I'll input from the source browser and go down to Avid Media. I'm going to input this material 
double click once now I'm going to say audio and create bin based on folder and link it's linking it and it created an audio bin now I'm going to create footage bin it already is defaulting to create bin based on folder and I'll say link it's making a new uh, bin so we went over this this is a little bit of a review so this is our commercial project and in the commercial bin this will be where we have our sequences so we can rename it sequences sequence okay so we have audio sequence and footage now in the footage bin we can um, we can expand this bin if we want to see it a little bit larger this is your source window your record window and we can view it different ways we can use thumbnails only with the names underneath or we can do a list i personally prefer the list you can scroll down and then you're going to want to put some material into the timeline so to put material into the timeline you'll double click i put an out in mark i'm going to put an in mark here I'm going to scrub through. He's sleepy, but before it begins to zoom back, you can choose how you want to do this. When I hit the splice in button, it creates, wants to know the sequence. Now, what would be good is to rename the sequence now. So we're going to call this commercial DP. It doesn't follow the name of the project. Okay, so there it is. Um, one of the goals here is to learn how to add additional tracks. So we're going to add a, an audio track and we want it to be mono. We're going to add several mono tracks and then we also will drag down, we'll go into the audio and there is some music. So we'll drag this down. And notice it wanted to configure its own track there. So we have this and if we turn this off first and then lock the track, I think we won't have a problem inputting more media. If that's on and locked, it, it doesn't, it won't work. Okay, so we'll go back to the footage and assemble you can decide how you want this to be. Maybe his viewpoint. And here we're going to let's splice in. And it did it did successfully splice in. Um, a couple things to notice here: the segment mode, which you can turn on, and if you right-click, you can see that you can turn on. It's a smart tool, so it'll either splice in or it will overwrite if you're trying to make an edit. And this is the trim tool, which is also smart. So depending on which part of the track you're holding it, it will convert to either um, an overwrite or a splice in type of a roller. This is an extract button, so if you have your track marked with an in and an out, it will cut and eliminate that material. This is a lift. It will leave a space. Okay, and this is your add edit to the... Here you can add an edit button. You can add to the track. Okay, so now that we've done that, I can kind of pull up my other video. Um, in this area, we want to notice this little track control button, which we can if it's in this position, the track, the audio track is closed. You can't see any of the controls, but you can twirl it down. And now what we'll do is we can add the waveforms so that we can see them. OK. Um, now, the next thing that we'll do is to. These are locked. And we want to have the explosion underneath so I'm going to unlock this and move these tracks up 
Let's put them here. I don't think, I think this is all silent material. So we could actually put it here. And let's double click. I think this is all silent material. It doesn't have, it's not a movie with audio inside of it. <clears throat> and then underneath here is where we'll put the explosion. So let's just say when the explosion occurs, if you have the explosion in the in the track, you're going to see that there is an explosion of the car. Let's just say that's here. We're going to overwrite and put it into the track. Whoops. We didn't. Um, what we need to do now is to turn these tracks off, and I'm going to lock the track and lock the track. Um, don't forget to turn it back on. Here is the explosion. I'm going to overwrite this into the track. Notice it didn't interrupt the track there. But in the, what I want to do is to drag the explosion sound right underneath that. Okay, so we'll go to the audio folder and we have the explosion. There's actually two explosions. One's longer than the other, and we can put it underneath. Let's open up this and let's turn on the waveforms for these. And we'll turn on the waveform for this. So you want to be able to see where the waveform is. And that explosion, you'll want it to start right when you see the visual. Okay, so you're going to create a montage. Now at the end of the day you're going to learn a little bit about mixing audio. Um, first of all we've got two explosions here so what we can do is use the blade key. We can come here and on this we can highlight the segment and make a cut there. I think it made a cut on all of the tracks. No, it just made a cut on that track. And then we can roll this back. Okay, let's use this one. And then if we go into the smart segment mode, we can grab this. Uh, let's go into segment mode. We want those on. So I'm just going to pull it back. Um, what you can do is do this and then pull it back. So we've got two explosions under the car. Maybe put it here. And we'll see how that works. Explosion, explosion. Let's have the explosion sort of two explosions, one after the other. And then this we can roll back. We don't need all that. Okay, so you're going to begin to use the trim tools. Uh, now the alternative would have been to put the other explosion. Let's put the other explosion on the next track down. We can highlight these tracks and drag this down. This is shorter, um, maybe a little different. But bottom line, you need to have the explosion under the car. That's one of the objectives. So we can just move this down and pull this back. And you can listen to this and see how it goes. And decide where you want to cut on that. If you want it to zoom out or not. You can also control this by pulling this back. before the zoom out. Oh, this is the explosion, so let's undo that. Maybe we don't want this little piece here, so we're going to undo that. That's the close-up. 
<clears throat> you can have the close-up if you want the close-up, but anyway, what you'll do is create a montage with the music and the explosion. Now notice there is a break there, so that is sort of the perfect part place for the explosion where you won't actually have to work with the video, the audio track controls. But if you do want to work with the audio track controls, you can click on audio and bring up the audio panel here. And with these tracks on, with everything on, um, you can control the levels. Notice that 5 and 6 it has to do with where your playhead is parked. So if your playhead is parked within the effect, you can see that they're all highlighted. And you can manipulate the level of those tracks by pulling down these pots. Okay. It's also good to group. That's ganging these two together. And then we're going to gang these two together. So let's say we want to pull these down. Those are all four ganged together. So what we want to do is ungang this one. Oh, that's gang B, and this is gang B. OK. So we have gang A. That will allow these to be controlled together. And gang B. And what we could do is say that we're going to gang C these. You could have done it in reverse order, but they have different colors. So this will control the music track, and you're getting both, you're pulling down both at the same time. Okay. Um, the other way to control the audio, if we go back to the edit pane here, is that you can click in here and you can right click and apply clip gain. This will apply the gain to the entire track, and you can use key keyframes. This is the keyframe symbol. Um, you can also hit the comma key, and it will create a keyframe if the track is highlighted. But first of all, we're in gain mode, so what we can do is come over here, clip gain. So let's bring this up. Basically, let me kind of move this over. Okay, so let's examine the panel here. First of all, you open track control by twirling this little button. This turns on and off your waveform view. In this area, you can see if you just click here, if you just click on that little button, that you can have none, you can have clip gain, you can have volume, and you can have pan. So there's some controls that you can do right here um, in your window. If you have your playhead parked here and you want to go into segment mode, these should stay on. OK, so this is locked. So we have to unlock the track to manipulate the sound. If I click here and hit the comma key, I think the comma key is putting, if this is highlighted, well anyway, what we can do is put a keyframe and the keyframes, let's unlock this track. They've changed the interface a little bit, so I'm trying to get familiar again with this. You can add a keyframe here on this track. Um, oh, I guess what you can do is you can drag it down. All right, we have to do a little research on the keyframes. But anyway, what you can do is place this in a way where it's underneath the track, the place, and build your... Um, you don't have to put it there. You could bring the sound down if you want. And even if it repeats, it's going to go, this is where the end of your show will be. At one minute and 10 seconds. 
to put your titles here. You want everything unlocked and on. So then I can put my title here, <coughs> insert the title at the beginning, so it's You Presents, and then your show will begin. And at the end, you can put the title here by just hitting the splice in button.